Hello, my name is Oleg Honko and I will be your instructor. Would you like to start your IT journey, get new and most importantly, actually useful knowledge? Then this is course is for you. This course is designed for absolute beginners, those who want to start working with Microsoft Excel but have no previous experience. After completing this course, you will be a confident Excel user who will be prepared for situations that occur in real life. This course has 31 lessons and each lessons are from 5 to 10 minutes long. So in this course we will cover the following topics. We will talk about where to get Excel, how to launch Excel, we will talk about main screen tabs and ribbons of Excel, we will dive deeply into interface of Excel, we will talk about something that called backstage area, we will discuss quick access toolbar. I will tell you everything about keyboard shortcuts. We will take a look at templates and I will show you how to work with them. We will discuss such topics as workbooks and worksheets. I will show you all methods of saving workbooks. Of course, we will be entering and editing data. We will talk about navigation and selection. We will dive into formulas and functions. Okay, talking about formulas and functions, we will discuss sum functions, count function, and average function, a minimum and maximum functions. We will discuss how to handle errors and what type of errors you may face. I will explain the difference between absolute and relative referencing, also difference between auto sum and auto fill. We will talk about flash fill and how we can use it. I will tell you all about named ranges, how to manage named ranges, and how to use named ranges. I will explain how to apply number formats, also how to apply data and time formats. I will talk about formatting cells, rows and columns. Also I will tell you all about Format Painter and how we can use it in real life situations. I will explain how we can work with rows and columns, also how to work with the cells. We will discuss everything about alignment. And finally, we will talk about themes in Excel and how we can customize it. So all what we will talk about will be discussed with examples that allow you to better understand the topic. This will give you a solid foundation for understanding Microsoft Excel and learning it further. So don't hesitate and enroll now. Okay, so in order to get Microsoft Office, uh, you need to go to Microsoft website. So in my case, I just type by Microsoft Office uh, 2021 and I get to this website. So here I have some options. I have options to buy standalone Office uh, version and I have option to have a subscription based Microsoft 365. So what's the difference between those uh, programs. Here is a table and here is uh, what we're gonna get if we buy uh, Microsoft 365. So as you can see there are some options but the main difference would be that you gonna pay once uh, for standalone version and if you decide to choose Microsoft 365 which is basically the same as uh, its standalone version you're gonna pay monthly if we go to this page so we're gonna pay monthly or we can pay every year so here is the prices as you can see for a family product it would be almost 100 dollars per year this would be from two to six people okay if we're gonna choose to pay monthly so here is almost 10 dollar in a month and almost seven dollar in a month for just one user so it's up to you which product you want to buy so if you decide just to use standalone version it doesn't matter so if you use uh, Microsoft 365 or standalone version for this course it doesn't matter at all so they the same the main difference between those products is the price that you would pay uh, and I believe in Microsoft 365 you get updates and you don't have updates 
on just this standalone version. So if this price is uh, high for you, you can always look for Microsoft Office on a third party websites. So in that case, you need to be uh, really careful. Okay. And as I said before, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to use third party websites or just buy from a official Microsoft web page, it's up to you. So at the end, it doesn't matter which product you choose. What matter is that we are going to start our course and we're going to learn about stuff that going to help us in our IT journey. So uh, let's start our Excel and get to work. Hello everyone. After you install Excel, uh, you need to run it. As you can see, I'm already launched my program, but if you are launch your program for the first time, you need to hit start button or uh, just uh, hit Windows key on your keyboard. So after you're doing that, you will uh, see this kind of window. You can go to all your programs. They are in alphabetical order. Okay and you can uh, find Excel right here, or you just can go to your uh, search bar and just type Excel. All right, here you go. You just need to run it and you will see this window. Okay, this is for um, launching Excel for the first time. It is not complicated. Uh, okay, so see you in the next chapter. All right, so let's take a look at the start screen of Excel. So first of all, on our left hand side, we have these buttons, home, new, open. So in a home button, we have uh, uh, some templates. You can make some blank workbooks. Also, you can hit this template button. Okay, and you will immediately bring to a new window. As you can see, this button is now uh, checked. So here is um, uh, some workbooks and here is our templates that are very useful. And we will talk about these templates in our other lessons. But for now, just let's just uh, talk about these templates a little bit. So um, there is hundreds of different templates. You can um, uh, choose some templates from this uh, palette. Uh, there is a uh, business template, personal templates, uh, you know, like budgets, charts. Uh, so for example, let's hit budgets. Okay. And there is uh, a lot of budgets templates. Let's hit back. So um, there is a search bar. If you want to find some particular templates, for example, sales. Sales and Let's hit this magnifying glass. There is a lot of uh, sales templates. Invoice, for example. Let's hit enter. There is a lot of invoice templates. So very useful stuff. If you don't want to make some templates from scratch, you can just uh, find something that is suitable for you. Okay, let's go back to our home menu. Um, we just talk about templates. So um, there is uh, two button, recent and pinned. Uh, the recent is show your workbooks, your Excel files that you was work recently. I believe uh, the numbers that can appear here is up to 50, but you can modify it in uh, settings uh, that we will talk about later. Okay. And there is a pinet. Right now it's empty. So uh, let's pretend I have a lot of uh, Excel files here. And I have a couple files that I work really often. In order to see files that I work most often, I can uh, just pin them. As you can see I'm hovering around this, for example, this book two. And you can see here is a pin. You just can simply hit it and it, this file will be pinned. And uh, you will always see these files on the top. And if you go to this pinned menu, 
you can see it's right here now you can easily pin your uh, favorite files that you work often and you can uh, find them just here on a pinned site so uh, we talk about this uh, folder already here you can find a lot of uh, templates that you can start from okay uh, there is a open button where you can uh, search for your templates where you can search for your files there is a uh, workbox there is a uh, folders is where you save your workbox you can uh, search your files uh, in your OneDrive or on your PC. Okay. Uh, there is account button. Uh, it shows your account. Uh, from there you can uh, change your photo or you can change your background or you can change your theme. Okay. The feedback. It's just feedback to Microsoft. Uh, you can give some feedback for uh, some feature of Excel or Word. Okay. Really helpful. And there is a but options button. It's really uh, helpful. This is really important section, and we will uh, refer to this section a lot. From this section, you can easily customize your copy of uh, Excel. Uh, you can really customize your ribbons. You can customize your access toolbar, and uh, change a lot of things like um, saves options. Uh, you can change the location of your saves, uh, number of saves. Um, you can change your language and a lot of data. So this is uh, really important stuff. We will be uh, going to these particular options a lot because we will be customizing uh, our Excel. So, okay. Um, but notice I'm hitting cancel and we will appear in this window. So uh, if we hit file, we will have this window that is uh, slightly different from start window. Okay, uh, so start uh, window, which we saw from a start of a video, is only appear when you start your Excel from a first time. And uh, this window is uh, pretty much the same, but it has some difference, some additional options, as you can see on the left side. Okay, but if you restart your Excel, as I did it right now, you will see this familiar window. Okay, so uh, it is time to make our blank workbook. Okay, we can simply hit this one or we can go to new and start from this one. It doesn't matter. So let's start this. Okay, as you can see, we have this empty book we can start uh, to work here immediately uh, but let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, this interface okay let's start from the top so here you can see this big green line this is uh, our title it contains a name of our, our excel file for now it is unsaved so it is called uh, book one Okay, on the left side we have quick access bar. So as you can see, we can save files. There is a undo, um, there is a redo, and there is a button that allow to customize this quick access toolbar. So we will talk about this stuff later. On the middle of uh, this uh, green bar, we have a, a search menu. As you can see, the uh, shortcut is Alt Q, and uh, here we can search uh, everything we want that relate to Excel. Okay, to our right we have our info. Okay, and um, next we have um, three buttons. First one allow us to uh, minimize this uh, Excel uh, document. Uh, this. Uh, middle button allow us to resize this uh, screen to make uh, our uh, Excel uh, document smaller. 
and next one this cross is uh, will close our excel but notice uh, there is important if you hit this uh, button it will close excel uh, for example you work with a couple of documents okay there are opened and when you hit this button it will close all those documents because it will close uh, the whole program okay so in order to close a document and uh, not affect others you uh, simply need to go to file and there is a close okay or you just simply can hit ctrl w and from there it will ask you to save your document you can say don't save and it will close your document so if you want from this screen to uh, create new one you can simply hit ctrl n and it will open a new book for you where you can start to work all right so let's talk about ribbons beneath uh, our green bar we have ribbons for example home let's take a look at this ribbon this ribbon we will be using a lot it have a cut copy uh, from this ribbon you can change your uh, font size you can uh, change some font you can change uh, you know like alignment of your text uh, a lot of stuff next we have insert ribbon uh, from this ribbon we can uh, insert some shapes pictures to your uh, worksheet and um, do a lot of stuff that we will be talking later uh, we have next page layout uh, so from this ribbon we can change our orientation our size our margin change our margin and uh, you know like uh, changing backgrounds and do a lot of different stuff that we will talk about later okay uh, next ribbon is a formula okay this ribbon is a really big bone of excel so uh, it is really important uh, ribbon that we will be using a lot uh, so from this ribbon we can uh, do some formulas okay uh, next data ribbon uh, it's you know like self-explanatory so it contains some data next we have a review ribbon from this ribbon we can check our spelling uh, we can add some comments and etc okay next is a view ribbon uh, from this ribbon we can change view of our worksheet okay we can change our workbook views and uh, do a lot of different stuff okay and help ribbon is self-explanatory it contains uh, some feedbacks help and etc okay well, let's get back to our home beneath our ribbons uh, we have uh, this bar it's called name box so let's talk about this stuff a little bit more this big uh, area is our sheet and this called cells okay for example i uh, put my cursor to this particular cell so as you can see it have uh, rows and columns so columns has alphabetic letters and rows have numbers so uh, this particular cell is d7 as you can see this row shaded gray and number seven shaded gray too so uh, d7 and location of the cell is appeared on this box so if i change my cell to another you can see uh, it change uh, name of this cell here in the name box so uh, it's really important to know what name of your cell when you will be uh, making a formulas so uh, talking about formulas we have this bar this is a formula bar and uh, this uh, where we will be writing our formulas for example for this cell we will be writing some formulas and uh, it will be making some collisions that will be result will be will appear here for example okay 
I will be talk about the formulas and all this stuff in our later videos more deeply. Uh, but for now, let's continue to talk about interface. So uh, in a lower part, we have uh, this sheet. Uh, this is a uh, name of this work sheet. Okay, uh, there is a, a new sheet button, so we can make a lot of sheets. So uh, the principle is uh, we have this workbook, and one workbook can contain a lot of uh, sheets. As you can see, we can uh, have a lot of sheets, we can even rename them, for example, you know, like um, something like mass. Okay, so here we can do some uh, uh, business stuff. Here we can make some mass stuff. And we can rename these sheets as well, but for now it's not necessary. Also, we can uh, hit um, right mouse button on some particular sheet and we can delete this sheet and rename this sheet and uh, do some other stuff with the sheet uh, like uh, move or copy, view code and etc. But we will talk about this later. For now you need to know that uh, one uh, book can contain a lot of worksheets. Next, on the right side we have this bar that we can uh, move our columns. So as you can see that now columns that are visible is W, but if we uh, move this bar, we can see X column. Okay, and we have this bar, so also we can move this up and down to see more numbers. All right, this button will uh, change layout of this worksheet, as you can see. Okay, but we will stick to this one. And there is a zoom. Uh, we can zoom out to see more uh, columns and rows, as you can see, or we can zoom in. Okay, let's bring it back to 100%. Okay, um, so this is all about uh, the interface of uh, our workbook, and um, we'll continue in the next lesson. Okay, let's talk about something that called backstage. So if we uh, hit file, uh, we will uh, get to this menu. Uh, this is called backstage. So from this menu, we can create new workbooks. We can save our Excel files. We can print them. We can share with other people. We can export our files can publish them to Power BI and we can close them. So um, I want to briefly talk about this info menu. We have those menus. I will talk about those stuff a lot in our course. Uh, so uh, what we have here is our protect workbook. Uh, we can add some passwords. We can inspect workbooks. We can manage workbooks. And there is a browser view options. So, as I said before, we will talk about all this stuff a lot later. But I want you to take a look at this one, Manage Workbook. So, this option is very helpful. If you work with your Excel file and you don't save it and your Excel is crashed, you can go to this menu and you can recover your unsaved workbooks. Or you can delete all unsaved workbooks. So this uh, menu is really helpful, so be aware of it. Okay, there is uh, this button. If we hit it, we uh, go back straight to our workbook. Okay, and another way to go from this menu to our workbook is to hit escape button on keyboard. Okay, guys, so let's talk about quick access toolbar. So this stuff really speed up your workflow. 
So what is quick access toolbar? This uh, toolbar uh, which uh, allow you to have a lot of uh, commands that you are uh, using a lot. For now it is only two command undo and uh, redo. So if you are using like a lot of uh, wrap text or uh, uh, this uh, fill color or maybe you using a lot of formulas or you insert a lot of pictures or shapes into your worksheet. You don't need to go around all these tabs and looking for a ribbon that you like, that you use often. You can uh, make your own quick access toolbar with all those commands and it will uh, really speed up your workflow in Excel. So uh, right now my quick access toolbar or uh, QAT are in a top left corner so I want to bring it a little bit uh, below so I don't want to uh, you know like uh, reaching uh, all the way to this area on my, my screen if I want to use this uh, QAT so uh, I will hit this arrow and I will find show below the ribbon and I will hit it okay so right now my QAT is uh, below the ribbon and as you can see I have a standard uh, commands in my uh, QAT and from now on I want to add my most used uh, commands. So for example if I want to add some commands from uh, ribbon for example like cut I can uh, hit right mouse button and add to quick access toolbar. Right now I have a cut. Also I can go to uh, you know like formulas and if I want to add something like after some I can add it to my uh, QAT. Okay so if I want to bring it back where it was before I can uh, go to this arrow and go to show above the ribbon. But I'm not gonna do it right now. Uh, okay, so we have our toolbar right here. So if we go to File, Option, here is Excel Options, and we have Quick Access Toolbar option. From this option, we can add a lot more commands. Uh, for example, we right now is uh, popular commands. So this is the uh, most popular commands that are used in uh, Excel. But if we want to have access to all commands, we need to give click to this arrow. And there is an option, all commands. Uh, let's uh, pick it. Okay, so now we have ability to see all commands in Excel. And if we want some, we can bring them to our QAT. So this one is our current QAT. So uh, if you want to bring some commands like uh, commands from this list, uh, we can just simply uh, select this command and give it yes. Also I want to uh, bring to my QAT some separators. Okay, let's bring a three for example. Uh, the separators is just the lines that will be visible on your bar that will make some groups of commands. So for example, I want to pick up this separator and with this arrow key I want to make one groups of commands like save, undo and redo. So I pick up another separator and I would want to separate a cut from other and uh, leave uh, this one like so. Okay, uh, and if I want to, for example, uh, change places with uh, some of this command, for example, this redo, and with arrow key, I can move it up. So this redo will be before my save. Okay, let's hit, okay? And as we see, uh, redo is before save. We have some separators. Okay, and this is our quick access toolbar. So if we don't want to see this quick access toolbar 
we need to go to file option click access toolbar and there is uh, will be an option show access toolbar below the ribbon we will deselect it and just hit ok ok if you want to reset this um, quick access to bar if you really don't like how it's looked we can uh, do it from menu ok quick access to bar and there is a reset option we can hit reset only quick access to bar also uh, we can uh, hover over uh, some of these uh, commands and by clicking right mouse button we can remove some commands from our QAT for example I don't want these cut options so I want to delete it okay like so or I want to delete some separator like so also we can add some commands from uh, this drop down menu for example I want to add quick print here is a quick print and uh, and we can choose more commands and it will bring uh, Excel option and we can start to uh, pick up other commands let's hit cancel so this way we can really customize our uh, Excel our quick access toolbar and really speed up our workflow Hello everyone, so let's talk about shortcuts. So there is a lot of shortcuts in Excel and uh, they are really speed up your workflow. So for example, if I want to close this document, for example, I can go to a file and close because I don't want to close the entire program. Or I can just simply hit Ctrl W and I will close this document. So if I want to create new one, I simply hit Ctrl N and I will have a new workbook. If I want to save this document, for example, I can go to File, Save, or I can hit Ctrl S and I will save the document. If I want to open my document, I will go to File, Open or I will hit Ctrl O and here is my document. Okay, so this is most basic commands. So let's talk about other shortcuts. For example, if I select this cell and I want to uh, make this font bold. So for bold is Ctrl B for Italic is Ctrl I and underline is Ctrl U. So Ctrl B is make it bold. Ctrl I make it italic at the same time as you can see at this ribbon and Ctrl U will underline it. If I don't want the underline, I just simply hit Ctrl Z and this will be disabled and if I don't want italic I can simply hit Ctrl Z again and there will be just a bold okay so for example if I want to copy this one and paste it into the uh, another cell so for copy is Ctrl C so I select this cell and I simply hit Ctrl C and if we go back to uh, our clipboard option you can see this cell are stored here in our clipboard so if it's stored we can simply go to another cell and for paste is Ctrl V as you can see from here Ctrl V and we paste this uh, information here so notice there is uh, some uh, lines going on in this uh, first cell in order to get rid of these lines we just need to hit escape okay if we want to cut this 
uh, cell and paste it to another. So this is really easy. To cut is Ctrl X. So Ctrl X and let's choose this cell for example. For paste is Ctrl V. Okay, now it's cut from here to here. So for example, if uh, we have this table, let's pretend we have not five rows of numbers, let's pretend we have 45. Okay. In order to go from first one to the bottom, we need just to hit Ctrl and down arrow. So as you can see, we bring our selection to the last row. Okay. It is helpful when you have really big tables with a lot of data. So if I want to go from left side to right side, I just need to hit Ctrl, right arrow. Simply from right to left, Ctrl, left arrow. Okay. And Ctrl, up arrow is to my first row. Okay, so if I want to select this column, I simply go to Ctrl Shift down arrow. As you can see, I select this entire column. If I want to select this row, I go to Ctrl Shift right arrow. Okay, if I want to select all this data, I just simply hit Ctrl A. Okay. So it's uh, allow me to select all this data. If I uh, select, for example, this cell and hit Ctrl A, it will select all my document. Okay. So you need to be aware of that. Okay. Uh, to hide this ribbon, shortcut is Ctrl F1. To bring it back, Ctrl F1 again. All right. So if I want to print this document, the shortcut will be Ctrl P or I can go to File and here it will be Print. So let's hit Ctrl P. Okay. And I can print my document. Shortcut to go back to my document, opposed to hitting this arrow, it will be Escape. Okay. Okay, another useful uh, shortcuts is for those who don't like to use uh, mouse in such programs as Excel, uh, who maybe have wrist injuries or just used to work without mouse, is to uh, use Alt. So if we press Alt, we uh, will have those letters. So for example, if I want to uh, insert something in my worksheet, I go to uh, letter N, insert. Let's hit N. Okay. I want, for example, insert a picture. So the letter would be P. Okay. And there is an option. This device, stock image, online picture. Let's try stock image. S. Okay. Let's uh, wait while it's a uh, lot. Okay, so uh, we have those image and from this point uh, we can select uh, any image we want. For example, this one, insert. Okay, let's hit Alt again and for this time we will insert shapes. We can use the arrows key to insert, for example, a star. And with the arrow key we can position the star any way we want in our worksheet. Okay, so in order to get a loose of this outline we need to hit escape. Okay, so this is how we can use our alt key. Uh, it's really uh, useful. So if you memorize all these numbers you can really easily work without a mouse. Okay, so if you really want to know all about shortcuts, you need just simply go to help and there is a help or you can use shortcut F1. Okay.
okay, like so. Uh, so here in a search bar, you need to type shortcuts. Okay. And there is will be article, my keyboard shortcuts in Excel. Here you can read everything about shortcuts. So I hope this was helpful. See you next one. Hello everyone, let's talk about templates. So to start in Excel could be really difficult. Uh, so let's pretend the situation, your boss asks you to make some uh, tables like business tables or invoice tables and you don't know where to start. So in this case, template could be really helpful. Let's go in a new page. So here is two buttons, office and personal. So we will talk about personal in a moment. Uh, let's talk about office. So uh, here is our pre-made templates. So templates is um, some tables that already have formulas and uh, they could really suit your needs. So for example, if you need some business templates, there is suggested searches. Let's go to the business. And here you can find a lot of business templates that could be really helpful and really speed up your work in Excel. So you don't need to uh, make something from scratch. So you can find some templates that really could suit your needs. Okay, let's go back. For example, you need some uh, invoice tables. Let's just type in a search bar invoice, right, like so. And here's a lot of invoices templates. So uh, let's pick up this simple invoice. Let's click on it. And here we can see how this invoice uh, template would be look like. Here we have those arrows. With those arrows we can choose another invoice template. So if you want something like this or maybe like this, it's totally fine to pick uh, some of those templates. But for now I will go back to my simple invoice and I just simply hit create. Okay, so these templates are really reusable. So what I mean by that, we can change this company name, for example, IT course. Okay, uh, I can change this color. Uh, let's pick up something like this. Okay, and if we select this cell, we can see these cells already have some formulas. So these templates, all templates, uh, have already have a formulas, so you just need to fill them in. So for example, let's type item one description, course, quantity, one unit price. Let's pretend forty dollars discount zero, and you can see it's already fill this cell and it's already show a total sum. Okay, so here we can add a text, for example, something like this, and it will already calculate our text and update our total sum. So these templates are really helpful and we can reuse them for a lot of clients so for example we uh, want to use these templates in our business we can uh, change our company name we can add address city state zip code phone number fax email website and we use this template for a lot of our clients so how we can do this we need to save this. Let's go file, save us. Now, if you want to save your template, for example, on your uh, desktop. So for example, you choose your desktop and you choose a folder. So let's add a name to our uh, template. For example, my business.
template for example 2023 all right so uh, now really important be aware if you want to save this file as a template we need to go to this option and pick this excel template so now notice the save folder is now changed to custom office templates and there is a reason for that if we gonna save our template in uh, this folder let's save this and go in file new we would be able to go to this personal tab and we will be able to find our template here and we will be able to reuse this template with our modifications as many times as we want but if we would save this template like this file save us in this folder we won't be able to find our template in this personal tab so be aware of that so after you done your template after you fill this all areas you just simply can save this excel file as simple excel and send this file to your client if you want to make some other invoice to another client you just go to your personal tab and use this template all right let's talk about workbooks so let's create a blank workbook okay so here is uh, our blank workbook and let's talk about it a little bit so uh, as you can see on the top uh, green line here we have a name of uh, our uh, excel file for now it's book one because it's unsaved we have search bar uh, shortcut would be alt q and we have buttons that we are talking about in a previous video so also we have this worksheet and we have a sheets so uh, one workbook can contains up to 255 sheets so there is a lot okay also these sheets as you can see have cells so every sheet have rows and columns so columns represented by letters and rows represented by numbers so every cell have a name as, as you can see if i choose for example this cell there is will be her name k5 so k is column and five is a row so where those two intersect there is will be a, our cell okay in these cells we can put any data we want we can put letters we can add numbers we can uh, add a date okay and also we can copy this old data by ctrl c and choosing another cell we can paste it ctrl v uh, we can uh, cut this data by shortcut is uh, ctrl x and paste it like so by ctrl v okay so as i said before one workbook can contain up to 255 sheets so here is our sheet that we are currently working on we can rename it we can do this by clicking right mouse button and here is contextual menu we can uh, select the name and give it uh, some name for example math okay also we can add a new sheet by pressing this plus button okay we can rename it by uh, just uh, double click it with your left mouse okay and give it another name for example calc okay also there is a shortcut to add another uh, sheet is a uh, ctrl f11 
also we can uh, add another sheet by uh, clicking uh, right mouse button on uh, some sheet and pick up insert and there is would be a worksheet okay as you can see also we can change a color so let's uh, pick up some color for sheet 3 and pick up color for math and calc so this way you can color code your worksheets okay you can delete your worksheets for example right mouse button click to have this uh, contextual menu and there is a delete button okay we can rearrange those worksheets for example i want calc be before math i'm just clicking and dragging this worksheet like so all right so if i want to copy a worksheet i just simply hit ctrl and click and drop worksheet that i want to copy for example calc and as you can see there is a copy okay also I can use move or copy okay so what is gonna do it would move for example this calc 2 to another workbook for right now I don't have another uh, workbooks so let's make a new book okay like so okay and hit okay so as you can see there is a, a new book and there is a calc 2 worksheet that we are moved from our previous book so let's close this one ctrl w don't save it okay as you can see the calc 2 are gone for now so let's do a copy right click move or copy and we will select a new book and for now i want to create a copy okay okay so uh, there is a book three and there is a calc uh, sheet this worksheet is just a copy of our previous uh, worksheet so let's close this ctrl w don't save and as you can see there is a calc still on this workbook so uh, really helpful really important stuff and finally shortcut for creating sheets is would be shift f11 okay so let's talk about how we can save our work so let's create a blank workbook all right so as a name bar we can say uh, that this is uh, book one it is not saved okay so to save our uh, work we have a couple of options first of all uh, we can do this by uh, hitting this icon on our quick access toolbar okay something like this or use a shortcut ctrl s or if you want we can go to file and there is uh, two options save and save us so the difference between those two are that if you are gonna save your workbook for the first time it doesn't matter that you pick save or save us it would bring you to a uh, save us options because you are saving your file for the first time okay uh, let's uh, save it so let's choose a location okay here i choose my location and let's uh, give it a name uh, for example table one there is a excel workbook uh, this is a default type of our file we can choose uh, here a lot of types uh, but we gonna stick with a default one okay let's save it okay after you hit a save you immediately notice that we are bring back to our uh, workbook and here is a new name table one so 
if we are uh, gonna make a change some something like this okay and uh, now right now if we gonna uh, use a save or save option it's just gonna save us because it's already have a name and it's not gonna put us in save us options but if we want to change name of our file we need to go to save us and choose a location and from this point we can change our uh, file name okay so right now as you can see we're working on a table too so if you don't want to change uh, a file name or make a, a copy of a file uh, we're gonna stick with just uh, this icon shortcut ctrl s or just go in uh, file and save if you want to change a name of our file or make a duplicate we are going to save us be aware if you are saving your file from a for a first time you are always gonna be saving your file as save as option because you need to give your file a name okay so let's uh, talk about how we can recover our files so for example you experience some crashes in excel so uh, what you can do first of all let's visit uh, option tab file option and there is a will be a save uh, button okay so what we can see here we can see that our saves gonna be in standard excel workbook files format okay uh, there is a save after recover information every 10 minutes you can uh, change this to five minutes so it it means uh, that uh, excel will be making uh, your uh, auto saves in every five minutes so if you are gonna work and you will experience some crashes this means you will lose only five minutes of your work so here is a location where our uh, recovery files will be located and there is also an option keep as the last after recovered version if you close without saving so what does it mean it means that uh, if you experience some crashes and you don't save your files after you relaunch your excel there will be a window that would ask you if you want to recover your last file that you was working on so very helpful stuff also if you uh, go to for example info into info uh, there is a manage workbook option so what does it mean you can recover and save file here so you can go to this option and it will bring you to a location where your unsaved files is and from this folder you can choose uh, what file you want so as you can see i have a two but if you have a lot of files here you can just uh, look at your date and choose uh, what file you want so you just simply uh, sell this file and hit open button so this way you can find your unsaved recovered files so if you are experienced some crashes in your excel don't worry uh, there is a uh, auto save options and you can even recover your lost files okay let's talk about entering a data and how we can edit it so we can enter different types of data such as numbers letters percentages decimal numbers uh, formulas dates uh, and others okay so let's take a look let's double click on this cell and type and type months okay so notice if i'm hit my enter uh, key it shift me to the ne to the next cell okay so let's double click it and type january gen okay so notice when i type in in this cell it also appear on a formula bar so this mean let's hit enter this mean if i want to type something in this cell i could just type it in a formula bar like so 
February. Okay, so Excel have a really great feature that allow you to auto refill those cells with the data that are here. So uh, he understands that I want to put here names of the months. So if we uh, go to the first month, uh, January, here is will be this dot. So we can uh, hover over it and just drag it. So as you can see, there is would be after refill with those months. Okay, this is really helpful. So this stuff work also with the uh, uh, with the days. So again, days. Let's uh, type Monday. Month. Okay, the same stuff. I would uh, drag this dot. Sunday to Sunday. Okay. And my day of the week would be filled here. Okay, same stuff work with uh, numbers. So let's uh, type numbers. Let's put one, two, and let's and let's refill it. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, work with the numbers too. So notice this if I just put here one and there is two and just would be scrolling from second number. So it would refill everything with number two. But there is a autofill option. And we have some options. Uh, we can fill with series. We can fill with formatting only. Okay. We can fill without formatting. As you can see, there is a date here. And we can use flash fill. Okay. So be notice. So you have some options here. All right. So let's take at another example. I select this cell and Let's type it January. Okay, I want to do this operation to all these months. So what I need to do, I just need to select this January and do this out of fill again. And as you can see, all those months are now have uh, their full names. Same stuff with the uh, day of the weeks. Okay, Monday. Simple as that. Let's uh, take at another uh, example. So let's put some, you know, like a really long name here. Okay, as you can see, this name is really long. It may look like this name used two columns, F and G, but technically it's just on a F column. Okay, if we select this column, we will see in a format bar this whole name. So uh, we need to resize this column to match this name. So what we can do here, we can just uh, simply double click on this separated line. So it will resize this bar to fit the name or let's bring it back. We can, as I said before, we can adjust uh, hover over this bar and uh, with left mouse click drag this separating bar to wherever we want so like this one uh, so uh, as you can see you have a lot of options here also you can uh, as you know from our previous lesson you can add a color for uh, these cells you can change this appearance to a bold for example this for underline you can change font like this and do all this kind of stuff. Here you can simply select all of this data here and simply align this to a middle, okay, like so. Also, this uh, after fill work with the dates. So let's type a date, all right. So uh, let's type 
something like this, all right, and drag this to where we need. So as you can see, it auto refill all these cells with the uh, dates. So uh, be aware, this really helpful stuff, uh, and uh, it will uh, really speed up your workflow in uh, Excel. So if you type in something here, for example, and you will hit enter, your cursor will push you to another cell. So in order to stay in the same cell, let's type in something, you need to uh, use uh, shortcut, control, enter. And notice you stay in the same cell that you was before. So this is helpful for cases like this. When you want to, for example, let's say Monday, you want to stay in the same cell to track and refill all these cells. So you just hit Ctrl Enter and this way you can refill all this data. And you will stay in the same cell and you can easily refill all this data. Uh, also, there is a uh, in terms of editing this data, you can, as always, uh, use your copy, cut, paste. So shortcut for cut will be Ctrl X, copy, Ctrl C, paste, Ctrl V. So let's use this Ctrl C, Ctrl V, let's Ctrl X, cut it and put it here, Ctrl V. All right. So this is a just basic uh, workflow that you can do in Excel to make you more familiar with uh, uh, Excel, with uh, entering and editing data. Okay, let's talk about how we can make selections of rows, columns, cells in your worksheet. So, uh, first of all, let's save our document. You can do this by hitting this icon or you can go to File, Save, or you can use a shortcut, Ctrl S, right. So first of all, we can use a mouse. We can just select what cell we need and just drag our mouse to down, to right, and this way we can select our uh, rows and columns. So this is uh, just a first method. So, with this method, we are selecting uh, those uh, cells that are uh, near to each other. Okay. But if we want to select those uh, cells that are not close to each other, for example, uh, April and this date. So it's really easy. First of all, we select April. We will hold the control and we will click on are those cells that we are need to select. So this way also we can hold control and just drag our mouse to select other cells. So like this. Okay, really helpful way. So also we can use uh, these columns. So for example, we if you want to select all this uh, column and let's pretend we have a lot of data here. We uh, don't want to just, you know, like uh, uh, clicking here and drag our mouse to select all, let's pretend 10,000 rows of our data. So we can just simply hit here and uh, this all column will be selected. Also, we can just click our left mouse button and just drag this, uh, our, and just drag our mouse to select all columns that we need. Also, we can use Ctrl to select the columns that are not near to each other, like so. Same principle work with the rows. We can select rows, we can drag a mouse to select all rows, and we can use a Ctrl to select rows that are not near to each other. So, like this. Okay. Also, we can use our keyboard. So, for example, we select this month or day, doesn't matter. With the Shift key hold, I can use uh, my arrow keys 
and just tap down to select uh, what uh, data I want. Type in right, I can select other uh, rules and columns. So I can go up to uh, uh, refine my selection. Okay, so let's say I want to select all this column. So this is real easy. I just need to hold Ctrl Shift and down. So it will select all this column. As you can see, I have some blank cell here. So it uh, doesn't select it. So if I want to continue my selection, I just need to continue to uh, tap down while holding uh, Ctrl Shift and I will continue to select uh, all these columns. Same for selecting other uh, columns. Just hit uh, Ctrl Shift right arrow key and you will select all these uh, columns and if you want to continue you just need to uh, continue to uh, press right to select other columns. So really easy. Let's uh, take a look at some um, example. If you want to select this column, let's select it, Ctrl Shift uh, down uh, arrow key and we can change it format. So we can change it currency, numbers, general, let's change it to percentage. Okay, you can uh, change your data format from here. Okay, you can select this one and you can add a bold, uh, change a font and change a color like so. So as you can see all this column will be uh, changed but if you want to change just the data use the shift key and uh, down arrow key to select all the stuff and uh, make some changes like so. Okay, and change the color. So as you can see, uh, only data will be selected and only data will be uh, changed, so not a uh, whole column. Because maybe you have a lot of data here and you just want to uh, select some particular part of the data here and uh, make it uh, more visible, so like so can make it with a mouse and like this. Maybe you want to bring uh, some attention to these numbers. Okay. Um, also, you can uh, select all the columns and rows by uh, clicking Ctrl A, but it depends where your selection. For example, I select this cell and I will hit Ctrl A. So it will select only this part of my data uh, and if I want to select all everything I need to hit Ctrl A again. Okay, uh, so if I, um, another way, if I uh, put my cursor here, I select this cell and I simply hit Ctrl A, it also will select this all my worksheet. If uh, we have this uh, column, so we hit Ctrl A, it will select only this column. So uh, be aware of your selection because it will affect uh, your selection. So for example, it would be a good case to show some examples. So if I want to add a border to this column, I just simply uh, click here, okay, click Ctrl A, and here I can add a border, some, something like this, or borders. So if I don't want to add a border here, I want to add border here, so I will, can only select this and add a border. So uh, for this I can do Ctrl Shift down arrow key and do a border here and leave this like so. So there is a, uh, almost like unlimited possibilities to work uh, with Excel, uh, to um, work with your data. So thank you for watching. Hello everyone, so let's talk about formulas and functions. Formulas are really what Excel is most known for. 
and all formulas are basically calculations that use Excel functions. Most simple of the types of formulas that you can do it is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So function can be found in a formulas tab. There is uh, over 500 functions that you can use in your formulas. So uh, let's take a look at some examples what you can do. So for example, if I want to do addition between two numbers, for example, 10 and 5. Okay, what I can do, I can uh, go to the cell and every formula start with equal. Okay, equal. Then I can type 10 plus 5, enter, and it give me a result. So if I want to change uh, this number, for example, I want this to be 20. Okay. So uh, you see, I'm changing and nothing, nothing is going to happen. A result is 15. So let's build this. Um, more flexible way to uh, make a formula is just to uh, click the cell, go to the formula tab and or uh, do it in this cell, it doesn't matter. So for example, let's do it in this cell. Let's uh, place equal, then uh, let's see, let's click on this cell, it's k2, okay, here is a second row, k column, plus Let's click on this cell, K3, OK. Let's hit enter and it give me a result, 30. So at any time, if I want to change some of these numbers like this one, let's say it's 25, 25. It will recalculate the result because we have a formula here already in the cell that calculate this cell to this cell. Okay. The same principle work with uh, subtraction. We already can change formula here. So let's change it to subtract. Hit enter. And here's our result. Uh, same for the multiplication. Let's try it. Let's multiply. Okay. Is same for division. Okay, let's take a look at this example. So what if we have a lot of numbers that we need to, let's say, uh, multiply or do uh, some function? What we can do? We can uh, go to the cell and write formula that we write here equal and going from every cell plus this plus this and so on and so forth. Okay, but there is an easiest way. We need to uh, use some function. So let's do equal, then type sum. You already see I have a list with uh, functions. Okay, here's first the sum, then we need to place these brackets and there is a, uh, some kind of tip for us. We need to put here a numbers. So the way we can do this, we can just simply click here and drag down and add in those numbers. Okay, now notice uh, we have this formula in the brackets are B2 two dots B13. That means that we use uh, those numbers that in B2 from B2 to B13. Okay, let's close the brackets. Always close as many brackets as you open. Okay, and let's hit enter. And here are our result. So this is most basic uh, operations that you can do in a um, 
Excel, but we are going to talk in another lessons at more uh, complex, more advanced formulas. So uh, see you then. Okay, hello everyone. Let's talk about some function. And what some function do? It is take range of numbers and add it together. Okay, so simple as that. Let's take a look at those examples. So if you want to make a sum between those numbers, what we can do? First of all, as we talked before in a previous lesson, we can go to uh, the cell. We can do equal and put sum, open bracket, select all those numbers, close bracket, and hit enter. Okay, and we get a result. This is our first method. Next method. Let's click it here and use this uh, insert function. It can be found in formula tab. Uh, shortcut would be shift F3. So let's hit it. Okay. Okay. So uh, first of all, let's uh, bring our attention to this category. Uh, we in most recently used category. So there is a function that are mostly used in Excel. Uh, we can change it to all, like so. So here is a search bar. Uh, we can uh, put something like add numbers, numbers, okay, let's see go, and it will give us this result. Here is, we can use a sum. Okay, so right now, let's see uh, what this window uh, tell us. It tells that it will add numbers from C1 to C13. Let's take a look. C1, it's our date. Clearly, we don't want to uh, add this number because this is our date. And it's give us result right here. So. What we can do here, we can tell this function to do the calculation between C2, from C2 to C13, like so, and click OK. And here our result. Next, uh, let's take a look how we can do this sum for these uh, numbers in a different way. Okay. Uh, what we can use is to use auto sum. This auto sum located in formulas tab and it have a contextual meaning. For default, if we uh, press this button, it will do this sum function. Okay. And here is a shortcut alt plus equal. Uh, but we can do uh, these functions too. But you need to be uh, aware that for default it will do just uh, some function. So let's try it. Okay, and uh, what you see, it does uh, take our date again. So from D1 to D13. Uh, in this case, what we can do is just to tell not to take our date and just to take those numbers and hit enter. And there is our result. Okay, so next method what we can do is just to use shortcut. So let's put our cursor here and select this cell. Alt plus uh, equal. And it um, again uh, put in calculation our date, but uh, in this case, what we can do, we can just hover over this edge and shift our selection to one cell down. Do not affect this date and just to take in our calculation only these numbers. Okay, let's hit enter. And here our result. So as you can see, there is a multiple ways to make uh, some function calculations. 
and you can take what method you really prefer. So uh, let's talk about these ring triangles of our results. Those are mostly warnings. What those warnings are? If we click on this green triangle, okay, the risk would be a warning. And what does it say? The formula is this cell refers to a range that has additional numbers adjusted to it. So uh, if we click on this button, it gives us contextual menu. And here are some variants that we can use here. Uh, so basically, what does it say? It says that we have some number, uh, it is our date, that are not included in this calculation. If we want to change it, we can adjust the calculation, update to include cells, or we can ignore error because we know we don't want this date to be in our calculation. So in this case, we just need to press ignore error. But if we want to uh, include uh, some numbers that are we missed in our calculation, we just need to update our, form our formula. So in this case, we select uh, this one and say ignore. And we can just select every uh, cells, every other cells, and do the same operation. Hello everyone, let's talk about count function. What this function allows you to do is basically count the number of items in a range over a list. Okay, uh, so let's take a look. Uh, let's put our cursor here and uh, let's count how many uh, names I do have in this list. Let's pretend uh, there is a lot of names and I want to know how many exactly and I don't want to uh, know like uh, count them. So uh, what we can do, we can go here and type equal count and there is will be a lot of uh, function that we can use but we're gonna use uh, count right now okay let's hit tab and uh, now I need to select my range okay let's do this okay and let's close the bracket hit enter so notice I'm getting this value zero why is that? Because, let's do it again, equal count, sorry, okay, let's uh, take a look at its instruction, counts the numbers of cells in a range that contains numbers, okay, because uh, this uh, column doesn't contain numbers, it gives me a, a result zero, so, uh, we can use this count a uh, count the number of cells in a range that are not empty so this way we can count how many peoples we have in this uh, in this column so, okay uh, hit tab and select the range close the bracket and hit enter I have number 13. Okay, because this column doesn't contain numbers, so we need to use count a uh, function. Okay, so let's try this on a, on a row that contains numbers. Okay. So using just a count. Okay. Close the bracket, I get a 13. Okay, uh, let's do it once again. Count E on this one. And let's see what is gonna do for us. It's give us 13. Okay, so uh, you can uh, use count A. It's uh, how would we count everything, no matter it is numbers or it is a uh, text it doesn't matter but if you're gonna use account it's just for numbers all right let's delete this let's make these cells blank so uh, let's see if you have a uh, blank cells 
let's do it for our, our names. We put to use this count A. Okay. Let's close the bracket, hit enter, and it gives me a result of 12. So uh, the formula C if the, this cell is a blank and it doesn't count it. So let's uh, try to do it for our numbers. Let's select this range, close the brackets. Okay, 12. So it doesn't count a blank uh, cell, so uh, it's only count those cells that are filled. Okay, so but if we want to count how many black cells we have. So there is a formula too. So let's see. Let's do a equal count. And there is a count blank. Okay. So let's take our range. Close the bracket. And it gives us result of one. So we have only one blank cell. It's gonna work for numbers two, right? So uh, we can uh, count how many uh, items we have in a column by using uh, this uh, function affix. Okay, we can use a count, or we can just type count here. Okay, and we need to take a, our range like so. Do it, okay? And we have a uh, right number. Okay, let's do it. Control Z. Okay, a couple of time. And uh, we can use auto sum that in uh, a formula tab. So uh, let's try it. Okay, there is um, this pop-up menu, and let's do it. Count numbers. So notice when I do it. Count numbers. Uh, in this way, I need to fill it by dragging uh, this range of cells. Okay, let's hit enter. 13. Why is that? Uh, because a uh, cell that uh, would be filled with result are not close to those numbers, uh, I need to uh, fill the range all by myself like i did before but if i put my uh, cursor here if i select the cell and i will use count numbers it will automatically select all these numbers by itself because excel understands that i want to count only these numbers so let's hit enter and the rest are result All right, let's talk about average function. Uh, so average function is a function that helps you to find the average of the values in the selected cell range. All right, so here is our uh, example. So uh, for example, I want to find average number between uh, this row of uh, numbers. So what we can do? First of all, we can uh, go to the cell uh, do it equal and type average okay here is average and here we need to select range of cells okay and close the brackets okay so this is one method uh, second one would be uh, using uh, this formula bar uh, same as before, here is average, we can type it here, for example. If you for some reason can find it here, let's type it like so. And there is an average. Okay, so we need to select a range from here to here. And hit OK. All right. 
and uh, next way we can use autosum in our formula tablet. Okay, it's pretty average. Let's try it. And notice uh, it uh, make a selection, but it is not right selection. Uh, it uh, selecting from uh, top to bottom, so uh, it take this number and this number and trying to make an average number between those two. But we need to find average number in this row. Okay, so we need to reselect our numbers like so and hit enter. Okay, so but if we uh, want to find the average between this uh, column, uh, the auto sum will select it not right because we have um, this 2022 and we don't want it because if this is uh, a year, we want this one. Only this uh, range of numbers. So, like so. Okay. Uh, also, we can use autofill if we don't want to uh, go through every row of these numbers and doing the same stuff again. We can use autofill. So, notice I have that dot here. So, I can just uh, hover over this dot and drag this down. And notice. I have refilled all these cells with uh, numbers and let's see if those numbers are correct. So let's select this cell and let's uh, take a look at the formula. So basically it say uh, from B9 to E9. So let's see B9 okay, to E9. Okay, is that mean that this after refill is do a correct work? So we have uh, right uh, cells, right range of cells that uh, we want that uh, count our average number. So uh, also we can go Control Z. We can not just dragging this dot down. We can just double click it, and it will auto refill those numbers. Two. So let's see if it does a right job. So let's take a look at the formula B11 to E11. Let's see. B11 to E11. This is all right. So this way you can count your average numbers. Okay, hello everyone. Let's talk about minimum value and maximum value. So these functions are very important. Now, what the minimum function does is that it will return the lowest value in a range of cells. And the max function does exact opposite. It will return the maximum value in a range of cells. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this example. So, let's see what the number is lowest in this row. Okay, it's obviously centuries three. But let's pretend we have a lot of numbers and a lot of columns. So uh, let's put our cursor here, or we can do it in a formula bar. Uh, double click it. Let's uh, give it an equal and type min. So here's a, our function. Let's press tab and let's select uh, our range of cells. Let's close bracket and hit enter and it will return the number 23 which is right so uh, let's find a maximum value same operation max tab okay let's select this range let's close brackets and here is our number which is correct now we can refill our uh, cells with those numbers with this formula by dragging um, this dot to the button 
so it uh, we're gonna find uh, right values and uh, we can uh, do this for uh, maximum values but there is a uh, easiest way we can select uh, all our cells that we are want to uh, copy and paste a formula and using shortcut Ctrl D we can uh, refill all these cells with uh, those formulas okay let's check if it's right so here is 45 uh, this should be a minimum value for uh, July let's see yes it is correct and we can look at a formula it's going in range from uh, C10 to F10 which is correct C10 F10 and uh, let's see this one uh, this should be maximum value and this is correct uh, this is a maximum value so be aware you can use uh, all those methods or you can use shortcuts uh, Ctrl D to refill cells that you select with those formulas So let's talk about errors. So uh, in this video, I will try to explain most common errors in Excel that you will be facing. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's take a look at this uh, row. Uh, as I mentioned before in our previous videos, we have uh, this green three angles that signalize us we, that we have some kind of uh, errors. So let's uh, click it here and see what this error are so uh, in that case there is a formula that calculate all these numbers and give us this total sum but uh, we have an error because there is a, a number that are not included in this calculation and excel try to tell us that there is a number and if we want to use it in our calculation, we can update our formula or we can ignore this error. Of course, we don't want to have those numbers uh, to be in our calculation because those numbers are years. Okay, so for this case, we need, we need just to uh, click ignore errors. So we can select all these rows and hit ignore errors. Let's do it again like so okay so uh, next let's uh, take a look at these examples this is our most common errors that you will be facing when you will be starting to work with Excel and um, maybe uh, you're gonna be writing some formulas and there is gonna be obviously some errors so first of all let's uh, take a look at this total sales it uh, give us an error that say something wrong with the name so let's see the formula for this total sales is that I sum uh, those numbers from C column to F column in a 15 row so uh, let's take a look at this uh, formula sum D and there is our range of our cells so obviously the uh, mistake is this D in the formula but uh, let's pretend we don't know is this right or wrong so how can we trace this error so first of all we can go to this formula tablet and let's uh, take a look at this formula auditing so uh, there is a couple of options so first of all let's trace precedence okay so what does it tell us? It tells us that this cell, formula in this cell, contain numbers in this row. So let's try trace dependence. Okay, we don't have those. The trace depends command found no formulas that refer to the active cell. Okay, let's um, remove arrows. Okay, so uh, let's try another one, show formula. So uh, this button, uh, will show all formulas in our worksheet so uh, let's take a look 
here's our formulas for our uh, sales and there is a formula for our total sales so it's this way we can compare formulas and we can see that none of this formula contain letter d okay uh, but what we can do else let's go error checking okay uh, we have this dialog box uh, it, it tells us that error in a cell i3 okay we, we know that already and uh, there is a formula and what we can do next we can go and click this button show calculation steps okay and it's showing that this name is not correct some d okay let's evaluate it yes so it's uh, going it's a step by step in our formula and check if it's correct and the name is not correct so let's close it let's close this so let's fix this name let's get rid of this letter and hit enter and now it is correct it's working good so next error that you can face in uh, excel is a uh, reference error so uh, let's take a look at this example we have our uh, total sales in january and there is an error so let's take a look at the formula okay we have a sum function and a reference error so what does it mean let's take a look at our table and there is an no january so it is mean that at some point our table does contain january and we was uh, making some calculations but at some point this row was deleted and maybe it was edited or uh, something else but right now uh, our table doesn't contain this row so this way it shows us that it have reference error and the formula have nothing to refer to so uh, what we can do here we can change it to for example may let's close the bracket and now problem is disappeared so this ref error is just the formula have nothing to refer to okay next common error in a excel is this divided by zero uh, when you see this it, it does mean that you trying to divide something uh, by zero let's take a look at this formula and here is the problem so there could be some moments when you gonna be making a formula and it this formula could be really complex and long and you by accident could uh, divide your formula by zero and in this way you will get this error so be aware of that don't do this because it gives you an error so uh, this is most common errors and there is a lot of errors that we need to discuss more later so thank you for watching let's talk about relative referencing and absolute referencing so what is relative referencing so let's pretend we have those numbers okay so we have those numbers and uh, relative references work in, in excel like this let's add these two numbers so sum let's open brackets let's select uh, this range of cells and we have a result so by relative references we can just double click this and excel will refill those empty cells okay so we have correct calculation here and here so this is a relative referencing so what is absolute referencing so 
uh, let's take a look at this example. So we have uh, this salary and we have 3%. So uh, let's calculate what bonus would be if we have this salary and this percent, C percent bonus. So how we can do this? Let's add this uh, function sum, open a bracket, take this uh, cell, multiply by our bonus, let's close uh, bracket and hit enter. So uh, this is our uh, bonus for uh, Joe. Okay, let's calculate this bonus to everyone else. And notice I have a zero. Why is that? Why our uh, relative referencing are not working? Let's take a look at this formula. And let's see. We have uh, multiplying D21, which is correct, this uh, cell, with G20, but G20 is empty. So in this case, we need to do absolute referencing. So how can we do this? Let's uh, delete this. Okay. Uh, let's try again. Let's put here sum. This one multiply by this one. So uh, we need to make uh, G18 uh, absolute. So how can we do this? We need to press F4 on our keyboard. So notice uh, it at a dollar sign uh, before G and before 18. So this way it's making this number absolute. So let's cl close this bracket. And now we can do absolute referencing. So let's take a look if it is correct. So let's take a look at the formula. It take D23, which is correct, and multiplying by G18, this one. So because this is absolute referencing, Excel will reproduce this formula to other empty cells. So this way absolute referencing work in uh, Excel. And uh, now we can uh, calculate our new salary. So how can we do this? Just simply uh, writing some function. Okay. Plus our bonus. Okay. And double clicking. So here is our new calculations. All right, let's talk about autofill. So how we can uh, autofill this table. So first of all, let's uh, start with column. So let's make autosum. So let's go to our formulas. And here is autosum. Okay, notice this taking account our uh, year. So we don't, we don't uh, want this. So let's shift our selection uh, to actual number and let's hit enter. So we have this calculation. Okay, let's drag this here and it will refill our blank cells. So now we have those arrows. So let's get rid of this. Um, those arrows basically tell us that we have all those numbers that are not uh, currently in our calculations, uh, but we don't uh, want these numbers to be in calculations, so we are going to ignore them, like so. Now, let's calculate uh, this total amount for January. Okay, so let's put a sum function. Okay. Let's uh, select our range of cells, close the bracket, and here is our result. So uh, at this point, we can just drag this down. 
like so. Okay, so let's calculate average amount. So pretty easy. Average. Hitting tab. Okay, let's uh, take amount. Let's take a uh, range cell. Okay, here is a range amount. So in opposite to dragging this down, we can just double click it like so. Okay, so let's calculate minimum value. It is really easy. So uh, equal min tab. Let's grab this one, close the bracket, and hit an enter. Okay, so now we have this value. So how can we uh, refill this? Let's do it this and fill it down. So here's our this. Uh, let's calculate maximum value. Okay. Max. Let's grab those numbers, close packet, and we can select all this column and just simply hit Ctrl D, and this is shortcut, and it will refill those data. So now we can simply drag this one here and it will recalculate everything else. So this way we can easily fill our table. So uh, what else can we do? So uh, let's uh, take a look at numbers. So we can refill numbers too. So how we can do this? We can just do this, but notice, this is our uh, refilling with only number two. So here's our minimum. We can uh, do fill series and it will refill with numbers from 1 to 13. Okay, uh, another example we can do like this. We can select all these numbers and just drag it drop and here you go the same. Next example, we can uh, put our uh, number here and with a right mouse button we are gonna click on this uh, dot. We're gonna drag uh, this dot by one cell and drag it down okay and zeros would be this menu we're gonna take series okay and we want to fill this column so let's take a column uh, step value well, will be one and let's pretend let's uh, put here 20 so uh, it's gonna stop on 20 here we go um, what else we can do? We can uh, refill those column with, for example, uh, date. Okay, like so. We can do this. And it's working. We can refill uh, this column with, uh, for example, only with a uh, last day of the month. So how can we do this? Uh, really simple. We just put uh, numbers like this, like so, and um, there is would be those menu, and uh, we want to fill only months. So here you go. We have only uh, last day of a month here. Uh, same stuff work with uh, name of the months. For example, Jan January. We can and refill this column with all the months. Uh, same stuff work with uh, days of the week, Monday. So it doesn't matter if it uh, short name or it have a full name. It works just fine, as you can see. So um, how uh, Excel know what type here, how you know that we want to uh, refill this 
for example, column with uh, those ones. Uh, very simple. If you go to options, so uh, we need to go to advanced and scroll down and here is edit custom lists. Let's click it and here we can see all those uh, data here. Also, we can add our data and, for example, our names and uh, use them to after fill our columns. For example, you have some invoices and you have uh, clients, uh, so you can put it, uh, this uh, list of clients here and use them as a refill. Okay, let's talk about flash fill. Very helpful stuff in Excel. So let's take a look at this example. We have uh, those names. And uh, for example, we want to fill this uh, uh, column with uh, first name, this with the last name, and this with email address. So how can we do this? First way is just to uh, put here Joe. And uh, here is a, a little dot. We need to drag it. Notice uh, this is put everywhere Joe, but here is a contextual menu and we can do a flash fill. So Excel, look at uh, our first name, compare it with the uh, names in uh, this column and fill it with just first names. So uh, we can do this for a second name, for a last name. For example, we can put it Morgan, like so. Okay, select all these cells and using a shortcut Ctrl E, we can refill it with our last name, really easy. For example, these people are working in the same company. So we need to uh, fill this table with their uh, email address. So how can we do this? For example, let's took a letter from our first and uh, last name, GM at for example, excel.com. All right. For this example, we can use flash fill button. So let's go to data. And here is a flash fill. You can see here is a shortcut Ctrl E. So we select all these uh, empty cells and just going to press flash fill. And as you can see, it autofill every uh, cell with according email addresses. So it is really cool stuff. So what we can do else? Uh, for example, we have uh, something like this. So let's put it here red. Drag here, it in a contextual menu and refill it. Now here we can just short put it here. Um, select all the stuff, Ctrl E, like this, and here we can just put our code. And if you want to, you can use a flash fill button, like so. So, as you can see, this is really easy and really helpful stuff. Okay, uh, let's talk about named ranges. So, uh, named ranges will help you to navigate across multiple workbooks. Also, you can use them in your formulas, so that your formulas are not only easier to construct, but also easier to interpret and read. So, uh, let's take a look at this example. So, let's create some name ra named ranges, so you will understand them better and you will understand what I mean uh, by them. So uh, we have uh, this table. So uh, let's create some name ranges. So first method would be is to select this range of cells, including header. And here we can just type order. This would be the name of our named ranges. So. Uh, important stuff. There is not a lot to use a space between the words like those. You need to type something like name, number, number, 
or or you, you need to use something like this so uh, no spaces between the words okay so uh, let's hit enter okay this is our first named range so uh, next uh, we uh, next method of creating named range would be going to formulas and there is a uh, uh, define it not names category so uh, we need to select all this range of cells and hit create from selection now we want to create names from selection so I want to create a named range from this top row from this header so let's hit OK like so so let's take a look what we got for, for this moment. If we go to name box, we have our name and range. So what would happen if I choose one of them? It will select this column or this column, which is really helpful and really easy to use. So next method would be using this name manager you can see the shortcut is control plus f3 so let's hit this button so you already see we have our uh, name it ranges here and we just need to create another one okay uh, let's give it a name it would be quantity like so I want this range would be in this workbook okay. and here we need to give it a range of cells like so now notice um, this range of cells are absolute okay it's very important so let's hit okay and now we have another name it range let's close it and let's check it quantity okay great so next method would be of creating this uh, of creating named ranges is to, to use define name okay so let's type price uh, per unit uh, so don't forget we not allowed to use space uh, between words so price per unit okay in this workbook I don't want them to be in another workbook I want them to be in this particular workbook okay and I would like to specify my cell range like so okay once again they are absolute okay let's hit okay and let's test it price per unit great so finally we will do a name range for this column so uh, we just will we will be using uh, our shortcut we will test it control f3 okay it's working so let's give it a name so as you can see I already select this range this uh, column and if it is selected it already understands what name should be and it understand what what range of cells i select let's hit ok right so let's test it this is my name at range okay uh, so what i mean by uh, navigating across multiple workbooks with name at ranges uh, let's take a look here for uh, the worksheet so let's pretend i'm working in this worksheet and I want to navigate to a specific uh, name it range, specific uh, column. So all I need to do is go to this name bar and I can go back to some specific name it range if I want to check data it contains. So for example, I can click on orders and I will be bring back to my order name it range. Okay, so let's talk about managing named ranges. So first of all, we need to go to formula tab 
and use this button name manager okay shortcut could be control f3 all right so here we can manage our named ranges we can create new one as i will show you before here we're gonna type our name here we're gonna select our workbook so this specific workbook this named ranges would be available only in this workbook and across uh, this all worksheets so uh, be aware of that and here where we specify what cell range we would uh, like to include in our name it ranges okay let's hit cancel uh, also we can edit our name it ranges by using edit button here we can change a name here we can add some comments and we can specify cell ranges that we would like to include in this particular name it range all right also uh, we can delete some name it ranges if we don't want them to be in our list uh, by using a delete button okay also there is a filter button uh, right now it's gray because i don't have uh, a lot of name it ranges but we will talk about this button and we will test this button later so uh, be aware that you have this filter so if you have a lot of worksheets and a lot of uh, name it ranges so you can really filter them and uh, work with them with more efficiency so this is how you can manage your name it ranges okay so let's take a look how we can use our name ranges in a formulas so let's take a look at this example so let's get average uh, quantity of our quantity name it range so it's easy to do let's type average so okay average let's hit tab now uh, we need to type quantity notice here is a quantity to select it we need just to press tab all right so as you can see it already select this uh, cell range from this column uh, let's close the bracket and hit enter so now we have average quantity here and if we look at our formula it really self-explanatory we have average formula that will account average number from average column from this column okay so let's uh, count how many orders do we have in this column it's really easy to do count okay and the same as before we need to put here our uh, name it range name in this example it would be order here it is in the bottom let's press tab and close the brackets we have 13 all right let's take a look at the formula it is self-explanatory so let's take a look uh, at this minimum sales and maximum sales okay but here i want to do something different okay min top okay let's grab it from this total but for example if you have a lot of columns a lot of worksheets and you want to get some data from let's uh, say from uh, you know like uh, this mean that max function worksheet and you can't remember how those name it ranges are called so what you can do at this stage you can just press f3 and you will get access to all name it ranges in this workbook so uh, no matter how much do you have worksheets it's gonna give you all uh, name it ranges so in this case we want to pull this data from uh, total name it range let's do that okay total so as you can see it's gonna select all these cell ranges so let's close the bracket and hit enter okay so minimum 
is 23, which is correct. Let's do a maximum, same way. Max and pressing F3, we're gonna choose from what column we want to get our data. This would be a total, right? Let's close the brackets. All right, here is a maximum number is 209068. All right, all uh, we can do is to uh, calculate this total sales. So let's use this formula and total. It gonna select all these cells and it will give us the result like so. So as you can see uh, it is really easy to use uh, name it ranges in your formulas. It will help you to speed up your workflow and uh, it's gonna save you some time. But uh, be notice uh, if you gonna delete uh, your name and ranges so let's go to formula manager name manager and let's delete this total name and range so what's gonna happen yes i'm gonna delete it close and you will receive these errors as you may mention from uh, previous lessons when we was talking about errors this name error would tell you that uh, there is a problem with the name so let's click it on this cell and let's see uh, what problem we have we have problem with a name so mean uh, formula is all right so we have problem with this name so excel doesn't understand what is this total because we don't have a name range for this column so how can we fix this stuff so first of all here we can for this example we can just select this range of cells all right and for this two we just can recreate our name it range so let's grab all this including our name from top row and here we go okay let's talk about number formatting so to understand number formatting let's take a look at this particular exercise so uh, we have this table that contains columns which called number percentage accounting and currency so right now those cells are filled with uh, data uh, that have general formatting like this it's just uh, default formatting so in order to change formatting for these columns we need to go to this tab for example for number we can simply select all this data go to here and here we have a lot of options to choose from for example for this example we need uh, only numbers let's do this so here you see it change our formatting but if we gonna look at this formula bar we're gonna see that our number is uh, not changed but it will only change how it appears on this column because we apply this number format okay let's take a look at other examples for example uh, let's take a look at percentages so let's do the same let's apply here the percentage but take a look so this column are not looking what we are expect uh, so let's uh, hit ctrl z okay so in order to get right percentages from this column what we can do let's see so uh, for example 10 percent it would be like so okay 0 0.1 and if we apply our percentage here okay there is a 10 percent 
but how can we achieve all of this not by just typing by hand all the time so what we can do here we can one of the method we can do uh, just put in a sum next we want this uh, cell to be to be subtracted by 100 all right and let's put here percentages so here's our one percent now we can double click it and it will refill all the cells with correct percentages uh, next way how we can fill this table with percentages is just to type for example one and add percentage sign like so one percent also if we take a look at this uh, number group we have this two button increase decimal and uh, decrease decimal so we can do stuff like this or we can decrease our uh, decimal number to look something like this okay so uh, this is how we can do a percentage in uh, Excel so uh, let's take a look at accounting same stuff as before let's apply it okay and uh, here are our accounting let's do a currency so as you can see they are the same to change uh, the currency symbol all you need to do is to select all of the stuff go to this uh, number format setting uh, go into this currency tab and uh, here you can change a symbol for example for uh, English United States all right so now the currency and accounting has this file formatting so our accounting and currency format are pretty much the same so uh, this way uh, we can uh, work with our uh, number formatting so there is a lot of different options here we're gonna talk about them later and uh, what I want to mention you have a lot of options here you can even uh, create your own uh, formatting so um, it is not uh, the scope of this course but it's good to know that you can do this so okay we will continue to talk about number formatting in another lessons okay let's talk about date and time formats so uh, I have this example so let's take a look at this first of all let's take a look at this short date uh, column so there is uh, some weird numbers you may start work with uh, some excel files uh, and you may notice that you have some columns like this and you will be kind of confused but let's talk about it more deeply uh, okay so excel start to count days from january 1st uh, 900 so if we put here Uh, so we have this uh, date as you can see it start its count from this date okay if we convert this uh, date into number for example you will see uh, it mean one so it mean for excel this date is number one so uh, we can select these numbers and we convert it can convert it to uh, short date for example and we will see that uh, those numbers are actually meaning dates and here are those dates so be aware of this stuff so we have a long date here we can change its format here long date and we can change its appearance let's take a look 
what we can do here. We can take English United States, do it something like this or like this. And we will it will convert our long day appearance. So the next example would be a time. Same stuff as before. We can select all these cell ranges going here, and we can choose, for example, English United States, and pick some formats. For example, this one and it will change our appearance. Notice in the formula bar, our numbers still the same. We just apply a time format and its appearance, but overall uh, our underlying numbers is uh, not gonna change. So uh, this is what you need to know about date and time formats. Okay, so let's talk about how can we format our cells, rows and columns. So uh, here's example of the table that we are be, uh, working on. And right now this table looks really bad, horrible. So how can we make it look uh, more nicer? So first of all, uh, we're gonna notice that our rows and cells kind of squished. It's not gonna allow us to read all this data. So what we can do? First of all, uh, let's take a look at these rows. If we have some squished rows like so, we can hover over this separation line and just give it double click, like so, and it will uh, resize our row. But what we can do else? We can select all this stuff and go into format. Here is cell sizes, and we can adjust row height or auto fit row height. So let's uh, for, first of all uh, take a look at auto fit. If we uh, take this, it will uh, rescale all our uh, cells. So let's hit Ctrl Z and let's try this manual uh, height. So uh, let's try to put some number. For example, let's try 10. And it will resize our um, cells by this number, which is not really good. We can do a 30. It's a lot. It's a lot, so let's do 20. And it's more or less okay, but I will prefer to stick with just out of it. Okay, but we have a squishy uh, columns, so we can do just double click it, like so. Every column, okay. Also, if it's squished, what we can do, we can select everything and just go into format again. And here is out of it column width and it will resize our columns okay so right now our table look a lot better so what we can do now uh, let's take a look at these numbers as uh, we was talking before in previous lesson these numbers are date so what we can do we can uh, simply select this cell by hitting ctrl shift down we can select all this data and with shortcut Ctrl-1, we can achieve this dialog box. Here we go into numbers, date, and let's pick up some appearance for our date. Let's say I want this to be like so. And here it is. Okay, so now we have date, I look all right. But what about price? Same stuff as before. We select this uh, cell, Control Shift down, Control One to enter this dialog box, and since this is a price, let's go to currency, and let's pick up another symbol, for example, 
in which United States. Uh, decimal places too, it's okay. And let's hit enter. Okay, so here we have a price. Okay, so what else we can do uh, to make this uh, table look better? First of all, we can select our uh, names and uh, go into font group. We gonna change the font size. Also, we can change um, our font here and also we can make it bold but I don't want it italic make it underline so it's up to you also we can change our background uh, we can go to more colors and there is a uh, almost unlimited possibilities both colors okay so let's pick something like so maybe some something like like this and go into a font color we can choose something like this now we need to resize these columns again so go into format and let's resize columns like so also what we can do we can select this table and give it some borders so if you go this way so we can apply some borders here for example no borders it's like this or we can go to more options more borders and here we can uh, really match these borders we can choose a style of our borders it could be really thick or really thin line we can uh, choose what outline would be so let's pretend i want to have like uh, outline around my table i want to have grid separations so i can easily choose this option and i will can really choose what uh, borderline i want let's pretend i want something like this or maybe like this okay and here we have this border and um, so now it is really thin so so what we can do we can go to a border more borders and let's see pick uh, this line styles okay and now it is have this nice border so this way we can format our cells rows and columns okay so let's talk about format painter so what it's allow you to do is to copy formatting from one place and paste to another so let's get jumped to our exercise and see how we can use Format Painter. So uh, we have two tables. Uh, tables on the left have some formatting and table on the right doesn't have anything. So Format Painter is uh, situated here in uh, our clipboard. So how does it work? If we like this formatting and we would like to apply it here, so all we need to do is just to select the cell, go to Format Painter and notice uh, our format painter is on we will take formatting from this cell and we will apply it to these cells like so so notice format painter after i finish painting these cells it automatically uh, deactivates okay so but uh, what if we want to paint not just once if we want to uh, apply some formatting multiple times so what we can do for example we have this row with this bold uh, font so what we can do we can select the cell what we would like and we can go to format painter and give it a double click like so and now we can paint it with uh, this format multiple times like this 
Okay. To exit our format painter, we can click it here or we can use shortcut escape, like so. All right, let's see if we can copy this formatting to this column. So let's go and try it. Yes, it is working. Okay, let's hit escape. Also, we can use a colors, for example, like this. If we want to apply this color at some parts of our table, we can do this. We can go to, can do it like so. But be aware, this cell contain general formatting. So it will change our formatting here. So I don't recommend you to use it against, you know, like the date because it have a date formatting. So it, it would be changed to just, just general. I will show you what I mean by that. As you can see, it changed the date format to a general. So be aware of that. What we can do is uh, to pick this one cell and we can reapply the border here and it will also change our formatting so be aware of that so let's redo this i would like to have it here like so here like so okay so here is format painter and there is a uh, basic principles of use this tool. Okay, hello everyone. Let's talk about how can we work with uh, rows and columns. So in the previous lessons, we was talking about how we can uh, format our rows and columns. For example, we can adjust our uh, columns size. The same is for rows, we can uh, double click on separated the separated line to adjust its width. Also, we can do the same with uh, going to format uh, ribbon and using auto fit option. Okay, let's do this. Select like so. Uh, the same for row. Okay, all right. But what if we want to insert uh, some rows and columns? So what we can do? Uh, so for this task, we can, for example, if we want to insert uh, another column for this task, we can simply uh, select one of columns and clicking right mouse button here, we would have this contextual menu. So in this case, we can use insert and it will insert additional uh, column on its left. So if we choose this one column and use insert, it insert another one. So we can insert multiple columns. So by selecting uh, existing columns, we can use this insert button. It will ask us what we want to do. For example, this time we want to shift uh, this to right. Also, we can shift set. Now, notice if I only will select these cells and use insert button, it will ask me what I want to do with those cells. If I want to shift those cells to right or if I want to shift those cells down, let's try shift the cells to right. It will shift those cells. Uh, to right side and we have another columns but if we select columns like so and we will use insert it will insert additional columns to the left side without uh, this dialog box another way we can insert uh, columns is to go to the uh, this ribbon which 
located on a home palette and we will use insert sheet columns and it will insert additional columns so right now we have a lot of columns so how to delete them really easy we can select all those columns that we don't need and go into delete and delete sheet column also we can use our contextual menu by right mouse clicking then going to delete all right uh, same uh, work with uh, rows we can simply uh, select a row like so and hit insert it will insert additional row uh, same way we can do with um, this ribbon insert insert sheet row we can insert multiple rows like so okay also we can use hotkey to insert our rows and columns hotkey would be ctrl shift plus okay we can add multiple rows and columns by just hitting ctrl shift and pressing plus a lot of times like so okay to delete columns and rows we can use shortcut ctrl minus like so okay also we can simply delete rows and columns by selecting them and using delete okay so another way to get rid of uh, empty rows uh, or columns uh, would be using go to special so um, let's pretend we have a table which contain like hundreds uh, rows uh, and some of them are blank so uh, it would be really time consuming to go all over your table and selecting those blank rows and then de deleting them and for doing that uh, we need just to select all our table like so and go into this uh, option the tab go to special we will have this dialog box so in this case we need to select blanks okay and it will select all the blank rows in our table so we can just delete them for example like this okay so shortcut to go to this function would be ctrl g so notice you will achieve uh, this go to function this is go to dialog box so all you need to do is to hit this button special and we will uh, get to a familiar dialog box so in this case so we can choose blank and hit ok so also what we can do we can hide some columns and rows of our table so to doing that we need to just to select current column and go into our contextual menu use uh, hide notice uh, for uh, letters of our columns it would be a b c e so this mean uh, d would be hiding also you can see uh, there is two separate lines right here which means that we have some hidden columns okay so uh, same stuff uh, would be with uh, row, the rows we can select our row and go into hide so notice we have two separate lines here which mean we have some hidden uh, rows okay to unhide our uh, rows and columns what we can do if we want to unhide uh, D column we need to select C and E columns like so and use and hide okay same with uh, rows if we want to uh, unhide row number four we need to select row three and row five and just use unhide also let's go uh, control Z what we can do we can select all this worksheet uh, by uh, clicking on uh, for example this cell and using ctrl a or 
you can go to this triangle and hit it with your left mouse button and use unhide from here or also you can use this format button and go into uh, this option hide and, and unhide use unhide for example rows and unhide columns okay so uh, those would be main methods to work with rows and columns all right so let's talk about how can we work with uh, cells so uh, work with the cells are really easy we can uh, just simply uh, select uh, what cell we need double click it and tap data here also we can uh, use uh, formatting for these cells as uh, font or uh, font size and different kind of stuff that we was talking in the previous lessons also we can delete uh, data from this particular cell by hitting delete key on your keyboard like so also we can delete particular cells not just clearing data from the cell like this but we can for example delete uh, entire cell so how we can do this we can select this cell for example go into contextual menu and using uh, here delete options so it will ask us what uh, we want to do so in this case uh, we want to delete our cell and there is uh, some options first option would be shift cell left it would uh, shift our cells to left shift cells up it would uh, delete this cell and uh, it would uh, shift our remaining cells that are uh, below this one to up okay next options would be uh, to delete entire row and another one entire column so let's use a shift cells up okay as you can see it shift our cells up and it will delete the cell which contains name tom so let's hit uh, ctrl z and let's do it again but uh, let's see what would be if we pick up this option let's hit ok so as you can see it shift our cells from right to left let's hit ctrl d also uh, we have some other options if we want to clear our cells so uh, let's take a look so first of all uh, we have this uh, button uh, clear okay let's uh, drop down this menu so we have clear all we have clear formats we have clear contents we have clear comments and we have clear hyperlinks so uh, let's go in one by one uh, let's select for example this range of cells and do clear all so notice it will uh, not only clear the content of a cells also it will clear formatting for these cells okay so be aware of using this Okay, let's go Ctrl Z. Uh, next one. So next one would be clear formats. So let's select this range of cells and clear our formats. So uh, notice uh, content of our cells are uh, here, but it will uh, erase all formatting for our cells. So we don't have any uh, font style. Uh, we didn't have any font size any background so okay let's go ctrl z again so next one would be clear comments so this one is uh, for uh, those cells that have some comments for example if you work with some uh, tables that have comments in some particular cells and uh, you want to get rid of these comments you just need to simply uh, select those cells that contains those comments and going to clear comments so uh, let's go to let's talk about clear content so uh, clear content it would just would be if you want to select some uh, cells range and go to clear content it will uh, just clear content the same we could uh, use our uh, delete key okay like so so there is uh, even shortcut would be del 
Okay, so, so this is self-explanatory. So next would be uh, clear hyperlinks. Uh, so for example, you have uh, hyperlinks in your worksheets and you don't want them to be uh, active. Let's present those actual hyperlinks. So for example, like Microsoft.com or uh, Amazon.com. So if we don't want uh, those hyperlinks to be active, we just need to select all those uh, hyperlinks and go into clear hyperlinks. And from now on, those hyperlinks are not active, so you can't use them. So this is how you can work with your cells. Okay, so let's talk about alignments when you're working with the cells. Take a notice that you, when you write in a text, for example, text, it would be aligned to a left hand side of the cell. But if you write numbers, for example, like this, the numbers would be aligned to right hand side of the cell. Uh, same for a date. Let's make this cell larger. So the date would be aligned also to a right side hand of a cell. As you can see, here is a table. So the text is left-hand sided and numbers are right-hand sided. So to work with alignment, we have this alignment group in a home tab. Okay, so what we got here? Here we have our vertical alignment of our data. So for example, let's make this row a little bit taller, like so. And let's select this range of cells. And let's see, here we can align it to a center. Here we can align it to a top. And here we can align it, uh, our text to a bottom. Uh, here we have um, horizontal alignment. So uh, what we can do here, we can align it to our right side. We have ability to align our text and our, our data overall to our uh, center and we have ability to align it to our left side. Uh, okay, so this is all about alignment of our data in our cells. So uh, what we can do now? We have uh, this orientation button. So what does this orientation do? So let's align, let's select all these cells and uh, here is drop down menu. So here we have angular counterclockwise alignment. Let's try it. As you can see, there is uh, what this button do. Now we have angular clockwise alignment like this. We have vertical text alignment. Okay. Okay, like so. We have rotate text up. Uh, we have rotate text down and we have form a cell alignment. So in this menu we can really uh, customize our alignment. Uh, so uh, if you want you can play around this uh, configuration but for now I'm gonna say cancel. Gonna undo this alignment a couple of times to get back to what we have from start like so. Okay. Also, we have these two buttons, decrease indent and increase indent. So what does these two buttons do? So for example, if I select this uh, cell, let's go and click this button. As you can see, it will uh, move my text and I can shift my text like so. So notice left uh, side is my is the maximum where I can go and from a right side I can go a lot further. So it's almost like like so. All right, let's go control Z. Okay. Also, we have uh, this function which called wrap text. So what wrap text is do? For example, if I have um, a table like this and 
the text here in this column is kind of squished. So if I want to be able to see this text, but I need uh, this table to be like this and this particular row would be like this and I don't want to modify it. So what I can do, I can simply select this text and go to wrap text. So this way, let's me do it again with a header, so like this, wrap text. So this uh, option allow me to see my text in every cell and at the same time it uh, maintain uh, the cell size. All right. Uh, let's go control Z a couple of time. All right. So uh, finally we have merge and center. So uh, what we can use this function for? For example, we have this title and we want to make uh, this uh, sentence to be our title. Okay, so as you can see, this sentence is in um, the cell. Also, it, it may look like it uh, in cell A and B, but this is only in this cell, in cell A1. So let's uh, see. Uh, so match in center, we have this drop down menu. And let's see, we have mesh in center, mesh across, mesh cells in, and unmesh cells. So let's uh, select these cells. Okay, this all cells. Uh, and uh, hit mesh and center. So what does it uh, for us? It uh, mesh those cells that are select and it will center our text here. Okay, so let's go and do Ctrl Z. Uh, next option would be mesh across. So as you can see, this only just mesh our cells into one cell, but it doesn't center our text. Okay, Ctrl Z. Uh, merge cells. This is do the same as a uh, mesh across. Okay. Also, uh, we have option that named unmerge cells. As you can see, this option will unmerge all those cells. So this is how you can align your text, your data in the cells. Okay, so let's talk about themes in uh, Excel. So first of all, let's go to page layout and there will be this button that calls themes. So by default, uh, our theme is uh, office. So uh, let's go back to home. And when we use this office uh, theme, it use Calibri font and uh, it use uh, this sim color palette. So this sim color palette are only available to uh, office sim. Uh, so let's go to page layout and let's change our uh, sim to something else like uh, bandit, for example. Okay, notice when I hovering over uh, all those sims, it's get me a preview how it's gonna look like. So. If we stay at the, at the bandit, let's go home and let's take a look at the sim color palette and notice uh, color palette are changed. So uh, let's do some obvious change, for example, um, slice. Okay, let's go to home and notice the color palette is changed once again. It's updated to uh, the sim that we are choose. So, uh, also, it's update its font. So with this uh, theme, uh, we use this color scheme palette and this font. Uh, but we can customize all these themes. For example, we will stay at this slide theme, but we want to have some different color palette. So there is a uh, colors, and we can choose any color palette that we would like to use. For example, this aspect. So let's go to home and it will also update our sim color palette. Also, we can change a font for our uh, sim. 
we can use something like this and we can choose uh, what effects we would like to have uh, if we have something like uh, shapes here in our uh, worksheet so we can use this button to have some effects uh, for those shapes also we can save our customized theme so going like costume theme 20 23 hit and save okay and here's our costume theme so uh, we can use it in whatever we want even if we have a new uh, workbook so Control n it allows us to make new workbook and if we go to uh, page layout theme here our costume theme okay thank you for watching